Right, welcome to part 29 of the uh, adventure game in multiple languages. So this is the final part of the series using Lua. So what we've done today is to uh, enable you to craft items. Um, so we've we've pretty much sort of got the, the major parts of any adventure game together now. So I'll just run through uh, in uh, the console so that you can see what it's doing and uh, then we'll go through the code in a moment. So, <clears throat> uh, as you can see, we've got these kind of lines above and below the, uh, the question now. Again, if I press the uh, enter key, we get the message. So that's all working nicely. Um, so I don't want to disable. Uh, now we've got the games that we can run in. So we'll choose the school txt and it now is showing us the items that are sh uh, in the shared items dictionary so we've got the the name the object type so for example most of them are item here but you've down here you've got an uh, of a weapon so this gives you the type of uh, objects that these are uh, what they're made from uh, this one I don't think yes here we are look so this one is made from a sharp pencil paper and that will produce the, uh, the 100 lines. Uh, the description is on a line on its own now so that if it's a very long description uh, it will um, still display properly so we'll hit the enter key. Uh, yeah here's a long description look so that takes up two lines. Um, so those are the uh, the items and again we've got a weapon here which is the wire okay let's skip to the next screen so uh, yeah that's the final two items there uh, that's the enemies there's only one enemy playground bully um, again health strength drop item and uh, the description which again is quite long so then we've got the various locations which are uh, dis being described at three at a time, depending on the length of the description and whether there's any items in it. So again, enter for the next screen. Um, that's probably it for the locations. Yep. So now we're actually playing the game. Uh, again, the enter key comes up with that. So let's put in a name. Uh, and again, we've got the menu to choose our character type, um, but the menu goes the full width of the console, as does the choice underneath. So let's put in um, one of those, and then this is the uh, player properties, again, just to debug things here, so you can see what you've got. Then the description of the game or what, what you're supposed to be doing comes up. Uh, now we're in this... Um, the first of our locations. So we're in the dormitory. In the 60s, there are a number of empty beds, the room's untidy, and in this location there is a pencil sharpener and a rusty key. So you've got examine and take with those as before. Uh, let's just quickly take the pencil sharpener and the rusty key. So that now narrows the um, the choice is down so we're going to go north to the cupboard because we picked up the rusty key it will allow us through uh, and now in here we're going to just take the coat hanger and the paper and obviously if you examine them these will give you clues as to what to do but I just want to scoot through this as quickly as possible uh, so we're now going to go south to the dormitory and then south again to the stairwell um, it says here, bare walls and spider's webs around you. The doors have gaps under them. The door at the top has a key in the other side, if only you could get it out. So a little clue there. So you, maybe you need to make something. So let's um, take the pliers initially. So now we've got no more items to collect. So we'll open the inventory. And you can see everything that we've got in our inventory is listed along with down here, look, craft a new item so let's craft a new item so um, just to save time I will choose uh, a coat hanger 
and the pliers and then it should say that we craft a wire there we are we crafted a wire uh, we'll craft a new item and we'll take the paper and the wire and we craft a, a key retriever okay we can exit this menu now and we can now go south into the office um, because the key retriever will allow us to go in there okay now we've got a uh, pencil here let's take the blunt pencil that's it and we'll go east into the playground uh, we're going to attack the playground bully obviously and it gives us a choice of what to attack with so we've got various things so let's try the wire so we we only inflicted 10 points on him and he inflicted 50 on us so we're not going to last much longer so what we'll do is to open the inventory again and see if we can craft something so let's use the pencil sharpener with the blunt pencil and that will give us a sharp pencil let's craft a new item uh, we've got some paper and a sharp pencil and that crafted a hundred lines that'll do we'll exit the menu and now we're going to attack the playground bully with 100 lines he's defeated drops a padlock key so we take the padlock key and then we can go uh, south to the outside world and that's it we've escaped we're standing in the streets outside the school better have for the bus stop etc etc so end of adventure so we'll just quit there okay enter to quit right let's go through some of the code and see how this was all achieved now there's quite a lot of changes uh, in the keyboard library which we didn't kind of go through that was there ready for you to use but I needed to to change it uh, so let's just increase the font on this one uh, now the the main change here I don't think it was in error message I think it was in menu and process input yep. right so the first change is in the menu um, i've included now an additional parameter to pass in which is the window width so that um, this can now run both in console and in ide and adjust accordingly so um, if we don't supply the window width, it's given the value zero. Uh, if we don't supply the row, that's given the value minus one. Um, then it does a few checks and so on, and then draws out the menu based on using these UTF-8 characters at the side. This is something we've done already. Um, it's just that we can now adjust the length depending on whether we supply a measurement up here for the width of the window if we don't supply one then it will uh, assume a width of uh, 80 characters so if the width is naught then the width equals 80 so that's going to use the default console size of 80 if it's not supplied then in the process input i've now made it so that again if the width is naught then the width is uh, 80 and We've got this if statement so that it will only call call the clear input field if we are given a width of greater than zero. So if we're running in an IDE, which uh, the it will not try and clear a row, which puts out various characters on the screen, which are the ANSI codes, which are then not interpreted and it just messes up your display. So these will only run if you're actually running in a a console otherwise they won't uh, same with this um, here we're, we're printing out this kind of 
um, UTF-8 characters in a line across, which you, will happen whether or not we're in a console or IDE, but it will only do the fancy stuff and put another one in uh, if we're inside a console so that we can use set cursor pause to draw a pair of parallel lines and then put the input in between the two, which is what you saw a few moments ago. So that little change has been made to the um, process input and then all of the get string, get float, get integer, get boolean have also had the window width added to it and that is then compensate or, or taken care of inside by uh, checking whether the window width has been supplied or not and then giving it a default value of zero if not and then added to the process input here. So that's the same on all of the the get types here. So I didn't want to go too much into detail that because I never actually explained this keyboard anyway. So let's um, get out of that one. Uh, now the console, couple of minor changes here. Again, we didn't really deal with the console class. Uh, I've changed the console.resize to return two values. So if we are running in a console, as you were watching when I first started this video, then when we resize it, we will return um, zero and the width of the console. So if we resized it to say uh, 80 columns by 25 rows, we would return uh, row zero as the starting row and the number of columns, which is 80. If we're running in an IDE, such as if I was running it in here, then it would return uh, minus one as the uh, row and zero as the width. And that allows us to compensate for whether we're running in an IDE or a console. And also similarly on the console.clear, yep, done the same thing. So again, we'll either return uh, zero and the console width or minus one and zero if we're running in an IDE. So that, that's a similar process there. So we're returning two values if you wanted to get a, a return from console.clear. So that's that one done. We'll shut that off. Keyboard will shut that off. Now the debug display is a completely new class. So what I've done here is all the debug stuff that was displaying like the locations, the items and the enemies and even the player has now been put into this one static uh, class. So, for example, if we go to, let me see, I think it was in main. Uh, no, it was in game. There we go. So um, we've got in the um, modified player one here that uh, if, um, if debug is switched on, then we're going to call debug.displayPlayer rather than writing it all in here, which it was originally. Same with loading in our various uh, parts of the game. So for example, display intro. So create default enemies. We've now got if share debug, debug display enemies. Similar debug display locations. And I think there was one for weapons as well when we create the default um, items. Uh, so, and these, the same thing is also called when we load in from file now. So if we load game from file, we've got this uh, fairly long procedure here. And at the bottom of it, we we can call debug display items and display enemies. So this will work whether we're hard coded the game or whether it's uh, loaded in from a file. It will um, show those items if you if you wanted it to. Uh, minor changes in the load game from file um, in that instead of having this kind of bunch of variables just in a list. I've now made a, a, a local library 
which has got two functions in it, sorry, three functions in it, lib.reset, lib.fixint, and lib.fixlist, so that this data, which is a, a table with the name description uses and so on, are all set to kind of default values. And then that table is returned when it's called. So as we're going through each of the uh, lines in the uh, input file, um, once we've got, say, a, um, an ent entire item in, then we're resetting that data table after we have taken out whatever the current name, description, craft items, whatever in the table have, have been used, then we reset it. Um, th this allows us to, inside the file, to put things in not always the right order. What I mean by that is, if we go to school.txt, then we've got um, uses up here, um, container. That could have been put the other way around. I could have put item.container equals item.uses equal. And now it doesn't matter what order you put them in, as long as you've got them all there, then that will um, still work, which is quite handy. Now let's go back to the next step, which was, so the display ones is just basically pulling out all the stuff from the game library and putting it in here. So that's just one. Now main, we've got this, that was our new class game load for file. Oh, I just briefly went through that. So we've now got the de debug for all things and the way that the load from file works. Uh, display intro, I've improved the appearance of that. So you saw that when I was running it just now. Let's just find display intro in here somewhere. Display intro, there we go. So it just makes a slightly tidier um, layout so that we get the, the correct width for these um, lines and so on. Uh, there, so it's got its own inbuilt function to help format the lines, um, which I think I did last time. So yeah, I'm very sure I did. So let's have a look at the other bits in here. Um, modify player again, some minor cosmetic uh, changes, similar to this one, just to make it look better. Uh, then we've got. Oh, yes, the location update display location. So let me go back to location. Just increase the font. So we've made some minor changes in the display location in that when we're constructing the exits, we're putting the north arrow and then self to north. That's what displays when we are showing our menus the ex the exact location that that is pointing to. So north would be, I don't know, lift or reception or whatever. So it gives you an idea of what is in that direction. So that helps with the display there. Uh, the other thing I think, yeah, um, again, to make sure that it occupied the correct space across from, you know, like one side of the console to the other, uh, I've written two routines in shared. One is shared print lines and the other one is uh, shared. I can't remember now. Let's uh, have a look at shared. Just increase the font here. Yeah, shared format line and shared print lines, which um, makes sure that if we're sending in, for example, a long description from the uh, file that it will break it up so that it will fit into a specific width so what we, we can pass in is the text that that we want so that might be sort of 120 characters or whatever um, the length tells us how long the width that we want to i suppose width would have been a better variable rather than length but but it's kind of length of text rather than width width of window. But yeah, maybe width would have been better. Uh, the border is whether we're passing a character such as this UTF-8 character here. 
and the alignment could be left, right or centre. Centre, of course, is spelt UK fashion, so do be, do be aware of that if you're using it. Um, and then the again, it's got its own little uh, library function inside, um, which will pad the line with um, spaces either to the left, to the right or both if it's in the centre uh, and then return it out. And that's when it's then um, printed out. So the way this one works is that if we've got, say, um, 120 characters in our text, uh, it's going if it's if it's less than the length of it, if it's say, say we've set it to 80 the console to 80 across, if the text is less than 80, it'll just r return it as as is in a table. So we've just got that one line returned as a table. But if it's more than that, then what we do is split it into individual words by using the text split with a space. Um, then we're going to go through each of the words and add them together by doing this text concatenation with a space until we reach this, the length that we are uh, aiming for, which is this one up here. Once that's been done, we'll insert that uh, link that that new string into our return list, and then the text would then become just a single word with a space after it, and then the whole process repeats. So it doesn't matter how many lines you of text it needs to uh, fill up that uh, that width. Um, we'll get in the end of it a uh, a return list which consists of a list of pre-formatted lines that we can then um, print out. So that's the kind of um, format line bit. And I've also got a print lines which uses that format bit so that it actually prints them out. So that we, we call that shared format line to get our list of lines. And then we go through that to print each line out and then return how many rows took so uh, again that's that's quite handy and it was needed to to keep this as tidy as possible uh is there anything else uh display location player attack oh yeah all right so what we did was here uh we did originally just pass the location where the attack was happening but now we're actually because you've got that menu that pops up and allows you to choose what you want to use to attack the enemy with. Uh, there's some new code in here to deal with whatever you've picked. And it does in here, um, it will give you a default value of five, but it will use more if the whatever you picked to whack the enemy with is of type weapon. So when I was demonstrating at the beginning of the video, I picked a wire wire is a weapon but it only has a damage of 10 which is why it didn't do so well whereas the 100 lines is a weapon and has a damage of 100 so um that's what affects when you are, are whacking the uh, enemy and then as before the message comes out uh, so you just have to pass the the item you're going to use to attack the enemy with there i think that was it for the player uh, yeah, the shared format lines. OK, so that's all the uh, changes there. Um, I don't I could spend hours now going stepping through the entire code, but it's been fairly heavily commented, as you can see. And I will be by the time I publish this to GitHub, I will have added more comments. So I'm hoping that you've learned enough now from what we've done so far to work out for yourselves how it actually works if you run through it so um, i hope you've enjoyed the series there's still a lot you can do on your own you can uh, you can add maybe food as a new class which is inherent uh, from uh, item so that you you've got an item which is food which has like um uh, a health value or, or restore health value so that if you're going to put lots of enemies in your game and you keep getting bashed by enemies, you will need to restore your health. So you could have food at various locations which you can eat, restore your health. So uh, that's kind of a, a, one idea. Um, but um, this should give you a good starting point. So uh, last version 
which would be the C sharp one is the final video episode 30 which I'll be working on very shortly.